Good evening, good evening. Welcome to Kingdom Walk. I am Sonia Chambers, and I'm just gonna give a, a few people a chance to jump on in into Kingdom Walk this evening. Tonight we'll be talking about the word fit. This is the second segment of the cosmetic series, and the makeup is called Maybelline Fit. Actually, it says Fit Me. So um, I, before we get started, let's open up in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. We just praise you for this time. We give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise. There is none like you, O oh God, in all the earth. We, you are worthy. You are mighty. You are wonderful, mm, matchless in all your ways. And we just want to praise you tonight. We thank you, Lord, that we will be found fit. Mm, to do your work, to do great exploits for you in Jesus' name. So we give you all the honor and glory, and we say amen and amen. So good evening um, to everyone, those who are watching now and who will be watching later. Tonight's word is called FIT. This is the second segment of the, uh, mm, of the cosmetic series, but I was just thinking about the word FIT because the word FIT means uh, I have on FIT, actually. So uh, I was in Aruba on a prayer retreat and I have on actually fit because of my skin tone got a little tanned and I have on fit me. I think it's number like 570, 670, something like that. But it's my foundation. And tonight, are we fit? Is our foundation fit is what we're going to be asking ourselves tonight. Um, tonight, of course, you know, Kingdom Walk, we don't just uh, talk about it. We actually walk it out. So there are uh, um, various things that happened in the past um, couple of days, um, but I want to define this word fit. It says of a suitable quality standard or type to, to meet the required purpose. Other words for fit are suitable. And tonight we want to know if we are really ready to advance the kingdom of God or are we just talking about it? Or are we ready to walk it out? Fit, suitable. Another word, good enough, it says relevant. All of these are, are similar words that connect to the word fit. Pertinent, are we appropriate? Are we suited? Are we worthy? Mm, hey God, are we, are we proper? Are we decent? Are we right? Tonight we wanna talk about being fit for the kingdom of God. So the scripture tonight is Luke, chapter 9, verses 57 to 62. I'll be reading it uh, first in the Amplified, and then I will read it in the message. And the scripture starts as this. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus told him, foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. He said to another, follow me. And it says in the um, brackets, it says, accepting me as master and teacher. But he said, Lord, allow me first to go and bury my father. But he said to him, allow the spiritually dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and spread the news about the kingdom of God. It said, the scripture goes on to say, Another also said, I will follow you, Lord, as your disciple. But first, let me say goodbye to those at my home. But Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back to the things left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. And tonight we want to ask ourselves, are we fit? Are we always looking behind? Are we always thinking about the past? Are we looking for a hope and a future? Or are we always in a woe is me place? And tonight, I want to, you know, share some things tonight with you because it would have been, tomorrow would have been uh, how many years? Because I don't count years because my, my late husband passed away almost five years. So when he passed away, I'm now severed from that covenant. And sometimes we have to get realistic with that because sometimes just as it says, when you lay a person to rest, especially us who have laid our spouses to rest in the body of Christ, we have to start 
to do the work of the Lord. We can no longer sit back and, you know, we understand that grieving is real, but I had to come to a place and I can only speak for me. And I hope this encourages someone that I had to accept that I have to do the work for the kingdom. That if, we, if I'm saying that I'm seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added, there was no way that I could just sit back because I do not want it said that I am not fit for the kingdom because I keep looking back at things behind. So I want to encourage someone tonight. It's time to move forward. It's time to push forward in Jesus' name. So I want to take you on a journey before I go to talk about the message. Uh, myself and one of our, uh, our, our intercessory leaders, uh, Elder Susan, we uh, ended up in Aruba. And I'm talking about being fit for the kingdom. I'm talking about being suitable. I'm talking about being good enough. I'm talking about being obedient. So we were supposed to be in California. We booked a trip to do some walking and feminine excellence uh, training in California. And right before that trip was about to happen, maybe like one week before the Lord said, you're not going to California. And I said, what do you mean I'm not going to California? We have the ticket. He says, no, I need you in Aruba. Now we don't know anyone in Aruba at all. I said, I called elder, our elder and I said, listen, the Lord is saying that we should go to Aruba. So let us call the airlines and see if we can change these tickets. So we called the airlines, they changed the tickets and it was 15 cents different over. So we got a credit of 15 cents. So now we're on our way to Aruba. I said, well, I need to book a place. And I'm saying this because we have to walk out what God is telling us. Sometimes we, we you know, we're not fit because we don't want to uh, shift when the, the Holy Spirit says shift. We want to just continue and move forward and do what he's, what he's saying not to do. Even though it was a good thing at the beginning, it's not the, in, the instruction further on. So hence, we went into Aruba. We found a place to stay. Um, I booked the place. And then as we got there, because one of the things you got to walk out what God is sharing with you, because he won't give you all the details, because sometimes we get ahead of him. I know I do. So we got there. And when we got there, we started praying. We started praying. He said, we're on a prayer retreat. We didn't know we were on a prayer retreat. Okay. So we're on a prayer retreat and we're praying pretty much three hours every, uh, every three hours, all the days. So one of the things we got to understand is that being fit for the kingdom, we have to build up our stamina in our prayer life because when we're not praying, we're not getting exact instructions. So we're praying. And then he says to me, look on Google. There's a conference I want you to go to. I said, I don't know anything about a conference. I don't know anything. Start looking up churches in the area because we know no one in Aruba. But guess what? God knows someone everywhere. He knows they're here on each and every person's head. So even if you don't understand, even if you don't get it, he understands we have to be led by the spirit. We have to walk it out in Jesus name. We have to be fit for the kingdom. We cannot backpedal and continue to tell people God understands. He no longer understands. So we want to be a disciple. We want to follow. The, it says so in the scripture. It said, he said, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me. We cannot say first, let me. We got to say, Lord, tell me. So he told us. So we get, I, I find the conference. And it was someone that I was familiar with that I had seen on social media before, but never went to the conference, never met him. I still did not meet him at the conference. We just went, we visited the church. We stayed for the session and we left and we went back to our prayer retreat and interceding and praying. So a trip that started off in California ended up in a place that we'd never been before. Are we all willing to move when God says move? Are we willing to pivot when he says pivot? Are we willing to shift when he says shift? Because this scripture says, if you look back to the things left behind, mm -hmm. Are we really fit for the kingdom? Are we really fit for the master? We're going to have to leave people behind. We're going to leave uh, friends behind. There's things that we're going to have to let go to get 
um, the dunamis power that he wants to release on this earth. Everything is going haywire, but God is not haywire. Mm. He's the source of our strength, and we have to stand knowing that we have to walk it out. Are we really fit for the kingdom? Are we willing, are we willing to be suitable in Jesus' name? So we go to the conference and we continue on our prayer um, journey. We No television, uh, no social media, just a lot of no's. Just spending time with him and then getting to, as we move around the island, we're praying. What do you do when God puts you on an assignment that you don't even know is your assignment? You don't have to know everything. You don't have to know everyone. You don't have to see everything. You just got to know if you are hearing that still small voice, we got to walk because we want to be fit for the kingdom. This is not about a makeup. This is not about, we're not making this up. We're not trying to have it as a look. We're trying to walk this thing out by faith and it does not have sight. Faith does not have eyes. So ultimately we went to the church and we had a great time there. Then we got a ride home from another intercessor from the church who she just showed up because we were going to take a taxi and she showed up and she just said, oh, um, can I, I'll take you. And she never, she did not know us from at all. She said, I'll take you to your, to your, to your hotel. So we went and she drove us there and then she even got lost and we laughed and she talked and we, and she was the intercessor and we talked about prayer and how it's a forgotten uh, portion of our some of our lives and that we need to re, you know, regenerate and all of these things. And all I'm saying all that to say, as we walk out what God is telling us to do, we don't have to map out everything because sometimes we're so busy trying to tell God what we want to get done that we don't hear what he wants done. So a trip that ended up from in California, which is on the other side, ended up in Aruba, a place that we've never gone, became such a blessing to us. And we came back with uh, instructions. We came back uh, with directions. We came back revitalized, but really tired because we were up praying, not just praying for Aruba, but just praying for the globally, not just about our issues, but actually interceding for the issues of others. Are we really fit? Because that's the key. Are we going to take on the assignments that God really gives us? Uh, I want to share this. While I was there in Aruba, I got an email from Uganda from a pastor that I did not know. And he wrote me and he, uh, you know, told me all these things. He wants me to come there and train women. He uh, uh, had lodging for me. He wanted to send a ticket. He wanted to do all of these things. And I actually elder. And I said, listen to this email. I said, this is what's happening. I said, I said, but I said, one of the things I said, we're not looking for uh, platforms. We're trying to do the will of the Lord. We're trying to advance the kingdom of God. We're trying to make sure that salvation is offered to those who need it. We're trying to share the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So this is not a time to be, you know, being on a platform. That's not what the Lord's telling me to do. So he sent this long, extensive email, and I have uh, two pastors in Uganda that I'm connected with. So I, call, I, I sent the email to him, and I said, I want you to check this person out for me, because I said, not, this is not the first time he sent the email, but this is the second time in the past six months. So he read it, and he said, he sent me a text. He calls me mommy. So he says, mommy, I'm going to check this out. And I'm going to call him myself. So hence, lo and behold, he calls the pastor. All of a sudden, the pastor is confused because he doesn't know I got pastors in Uganda. So now he's trying to figure out who is this man that's calling. So he's saying, you know, I, I'm pastor, blah, blah, blah. And I see that you sent uh, an email to Apostle Sonia. And we would like to know, you know, I would like to come and meet you myself. All of a sudden, he's stuttering. The same person who sent me a list of all the needs 
where I be staying, hotel. And I'm saying that to be fit for the kingdom, we're going to have to be discerning. We can't just accept every invitation. We're going to have to vet everything that's going on. Because listen, the enemy is not uh, pleased with us when we advance the kingdom. He's not pleased when we're talking about sharing the gospel. He's not pleased when we're talking about people being healed, delivered, set free. He's not, uh, hey God, he's not pleased when people are having breakthrough in their lives. So we got to be careful. We're in a war. So just as Jesus said, we can't look to the left. We can't look to the right. We can't look behind. We can't be worrying about what is going on. We have, if we're going to advance the kingdom of God, we are going to have to, going to, have to be dogged about what we believe in and what we stand for. And sometimes it's a lonely life. It's fine because Jesus was alone. He stayed up on the cross for you and for me. But are we fit? So, hence, we block that particular pastor in Uganda. And I'm just encouraging someone, don't just accept, just because everyone puts out everything on a platter and says it's free, free could be a trap. So I'm saying to you, just be mindful. I pray even now for a spirit of discernment that we just don't just fall into the traps of the enemy and the snares in Jesus' name, that we bind up every fetter and every snare in Jesus' name, that no weapon that's trying to, hey, God, that's going to form against you is going to prosper. But, Father, we release the spirit of discernment even now in the name of Jesus. We're going to have to know where to go, where not to go, even to make the detours and the U-turns that you're giving us in Jesus' name. We want to be fit for the kingdom, God. We don't want to be left behind in Jesus' name. The worst thing to do is to be a Christian that's left behind because we're not following instructions. So, Father, open our ears, open our eyes that we can see. Open them spiritually. We're tired of looking at things naturally. We're trying to see the unseen mm. so that we can deal with the spiritual matters in Jesus' name. So, people... Mm, we'll be open to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We want to be fit for the kingdom. So I want to, mm, I want to end with Luke 9, 57 to 62 in the message. It says on the road, someone asked if he could go along. I'll go with you wherever he said Jesus was curt. Are you ready to rough it? One of the things, not everything's going to be a five-star hotel. We're going to, one of the things is going to, you're going to need a mosquito net, a net and repellent. Not every place is going to have air conditioning, but are we really fit? Are we really ready? This is the platforms that we're called to sometimes are in villages and on in huts in Jesus name. So we have to get focused and diligent and dogged about what we're supposed to be doing. The scripture says, are you ready to rough it? We're not staying in the best ends, you know. Jesus said to another, follow me. He said, certainly, but first excuse me for a couple of days, please. I have to make arrangements for my father's funeral. Jesus refused. First things first. Your business is life, not death. And life is urgent. Announce God's kingdom. And we have to start saying the kingdom, hey God, of God is at hand. We have to not take our hand off the plow. If you're an intercessor, intercede. If you're an evangelist, evangelize. If you're a missionary, get back on the mission field in Jesus' name. If you're a teacher, teach. If you're a pastor, pastor like you've never pastored before. And if you're an apostolic leader, it's time to get the troops in line. It's time to disciple the people and, and move them into who they're called to be. When Jesus had his disciples walking with him, he was teaching them. He said, greater works you will do. This is not the time to keep people on a pew in Jesus' name. It says, follow me. He said, certainly, but first, excuse me for a couple of days, please. I have to make arrangements for my father's funeral. Jesus refused. First things first, your business is life, not death. 
and life is urgent. Announce God's kingdom. Then another said, I'm ready to follow you, master. But first, excuse me while I get things straightened out at home. Jesus said, no procrastination. I'm saying that tonight. We bind up the spirit of procrastination even now. Hey, we're steadfast. We're moving. We're mobile in Jesus' name. It says, no procrastination, no backward looks. You can't put God's kingdom off till tomorrow. Seize the day. And tonight I'm saying that to you. We're going to have to seize the day. No one knows the day or the hour. It's time to get fit for the kingdom. This is not about getting fit, sitting in the gym, working out and building muscles. We got to build our spiritual muscles in Jesus' name. We're going to be fasting. We're going to have to be praying. We're going to have to be standing in the gap for our families, our neighborhoods, our communities, our cities, our states, our government leaders, our law enforcement, our youth, our seniors, our women, our men for marriages. We got to stand in the gap in Jesus' name. It's no more time to sit back and just wonder. It's time to move the kingdom forward. We're going to push because we're going to take this thing by force. But our, pu our push is going to be in prayer. This pray until something's happening. A lot of things are happening. And those of you who are speaking your heavenly language, this is that time. This is not time to sit back and just be speaking in English. Don't speak in English. Speak so that spirit can pray. He knows our groans. He knows our moans. He knows what's in the atmosphere. He knows what's around us. This is not time to sit back. People are dying left and right in countries all over the world. And we're just sitting back trying to see if, you know, what outfit we're going to wear. No, that's not, we need to get fit. It's the time is now. So it's urgent. It's urgent. So even though last week would have been my late husband's birthday and tomorrow would have been our wedding anniversary, I have to accept that that season is over. And some of us need to accept that relationships and things that were in our lives, those seasons are over. It's a new season. It's a new day. There's a fresh anointing that's coming your way. But this is a season of power and prosperity. But it's only going to come to you if you do the things that he's calling you to do. So tonight, it's time to get fit. It's time to get fit. It's no longer time to, to look back on what could have, should have been. We have to know that we have to do the work of the kingdom. So God bless you all. I love you all. I am Sonia Chambers. I'm the apostolic leader of Kingdom Advancement Alliance in New York and in Florida. And I am the senior pastor and overseer of Standard Bear Ministries, New York. Florida and upstate New York. And I want to encourage you only what we do for Christ is really going to last. Because I remember giving my late husband's clothing away and he liked his clothes. And I remember turning in his car and he liked his car. And I, I remember giving away his ties because he had too many ties because I love ties. 200 ties. But it's, it's where your spirit is going because this flesh will fail you. So I encourage you, do the work that the Lord has called you to do. So God bless you all. I love you all. Uh, we're going to, at my next kingdom walk, I'll, I'll post the dates because we're being led by the spirit. Then no longer, the enemy does not sit he watches. So we got we to gotta get sharper and become moving targets that he's missing. And not that everything is on a Saturday at 8 o'clock. And then your Wi-Fi acts up. And then it's Saturday at 8 o'clock. And then your throat issues. And Saturday at 8 o'clock. And somebody's dog is barking. 
we're going to have to start moving by his spirit. And just like we did in Aruba, something that we did not know what was going on, God knew what was going on. So I pray that you be led by the spirit and no longer just have a, a battle plan for a game plan for yourself. Allow God to interrupt your reservations. So God bless you all. I love you all. And I see you. I think I'm doing a kingdom walk next week. So I'll see you next week. And if you want to donate to kaglobal.org, you can go to our website and donate, or you can donate to standardbearerny.org. KAA Global deals with our global um, initiatives. And Standard Bear New York deals with our domestic. So God bless you all. I love you all. And good night.